Welcome to No Enemies Here, the show where you come to relax, smoke your pipe, smoke your whatever. <clears throat> In Canada, we literally mean that. And relax, have a good time, hear me yap. You know, my voice is soothing, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, let's get to the news here. First of all, the, uh, the news that we have to say and uh, live is um, Dean Essig, the, uh, my God, the huge icon, influence of war game everything is probably due to like people like uh, Herman Luckman, Dean Essig, uh, Mark Herman, uh, you know, vocal, these, these, uh, p- people who don't leave us unmoved, all right? So Dean Essig passed uh, this past week. Uh, Artie and I had a show about it. I didn't have much to say because I don't know much about OCS, BCS, uh, SCS, uh, my God, T, TCS, uh, uh, I mean, go to MMP and check out what uh, Dean Essig is responsible for. <clears throat> or go check out Dean Essig wiki page. I'm sure there is one with all those games. Or the BGG. And uh, you're going to be really surprised. And as a matter of fact, it, a couple of times this happens to me. I remember when Les Paul passed away. Was it Les Paul? I forget. But... A hoity-toity guitarist. And I never really listened to Les Paul, but I don't think it was Les Paul, it was somebody else. And um, then I finally saw, oh, he died? Oh, let me let me hear what he's done. Oh my God, I was blown away, okay? Just wicked, wicked player. And so it's the same thing's happening with uh, Dean Essig and myself. I'm thinking of playing a SCS game because uh, Artie tells me I could get into it. And it's not that difficult. Plus, SCS, should I go into BCS? I'll do SCS first. And maybe TCS, you know, Tactical Combat Series or Strategic Combat Series. Uh, Strategic? Yeah, Strategic Combat Series. Then there's Battalion Combat Series and all the other Combat Series. Dean Essig. So I'm probably going to play one of his games. I'll get more educated on Dean. And uh, I'll have better things to say on... On this show and on uh, Artie's show, the Chit Show, uh, uh, I got my first Dan said the smart thing. See, I'm happy about that. You, you guys are my peers. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so let's dispense of that horrible news and go into a sliding happy news thing. Well, here's the news for Lock and Load Publishing. They're having a The Boss is Still Alive birthday sale. And you can see the OG there. So Lock and Load Publishing is having a wicked sale and many of the products are 50% or more. And they say stock is low and the knowing day of stock is low, meaning that uh, he's not lying. And um, once they're gone, they're gone. Look, I'm going to show you something later on when I say something. If you want something, Lock and Load's got it. It's a sale. It's the boss is still alive sale. Pick it up. Life is too short. Then don't sell it. Because you're going to rebuy it again if you like the game. At seven times the price. So check out Lock and Load. That's what's happening. So now, let's go to... um, Recent and new releases of war games on Noble Knight. It's fun to do this. Let's see what we got here. Is this... Yeah. So... They just got in a Ve Victus number 173, Romanitas. Sounds like uh, the Spanish are calling uh, the Romans a cute little uh, name. Because in Italy, in, in Spanish, they put the something tas at the end with certain, I don't know, verbs or something. You're, you're cutesifying it. Okay, like, like in Italy, if you say underwear, they're called mutande. If you want smaller underwear, you say mutandini. And if you want big jumbo underwear, you say mutandoni. 
You know what I'm saying? All right. So, okay. Also, from High Flying Dice, Operation Icarus, the invasion of Iceland, June 1940. And check it out. This is new stuff. Only two of what's new on uh, Noble Knight. We also have 1940s Polish Exiles by Avalanche Press. I forget the guy's name. He's a Polish guy. Uh, I have a few of his games. Uh, it's your standard uh, European type game. The box is not made like the boxes in the States. Or, or, and the chits are not made like the chits in the States. It's made of, I don't want to say uh, cheaper quality, but less consistent quality. And I'm not saying anything about the game. I'm just talking about the components. That's it. Man, if that guy can get... If that's all he can get there with the money, because I'm sure this guy ain't rich, you know, uh, that's it. Anyways, it's mint for 25 beans. You know, and that's even Canadian. Check it out. Ka, Ka means Canadian. So it's like two bucks US. And here we go. Sedwich. Sedwich. Or Sedwig. Sedwick. Attacks, for God's sake. Salem's Church, May 3... 1863, that's one day past my birthday. So it's the American Civil War, Volume 10, The Sedwich, or Se yeah, Sedwick Attacks, Salem Church, 78 Beams by Revolution Games. See what I'm saying? 78 bucks. Uh, uh. Again, by uh, Revolution Games, Prelude to Vicksburg, Chickasaw Bayou. All right, this is American Civil War Volume Number 9, The Prelude to Vicksburg, Chickasaw Bayou. It's 64 beans, and it's in mint. You want it? Get it now, okay? Because then some guy like Artie is going to pick it up. There's not going to be any more, and the next time it comes in, bang, you'll see. Uh, Vijaya Nagara, 91 beans, a, a GMT game. Um, I don't know if the... Shipping is cheaper at Noble uh, Noble Knight than it is at GMT. Check it out. That might make the difference where you buy your game. A, a regional rival against the odds, Budikia. Or Budicha, but it's, I think it's Budikia. The Warrior Queen, number 35. When it came out, that magazine was like 40 beans. You want it now? It's 170 or 107 Canadian dollars. All right? That's what I'm saying. You want it? Get it now. You want, you've been wanting this for a long time? Get it now at Noble Knight. You know why? Because once it's gone, when it comes back, it's going to go up the price. I promise you that. It's the way things go, man. Flying Colors. Fleet action in the Age of Sail. The first printing. 57 beans. Artie gave me that game. Thank you very much, Artie. No Peace Without Spain is 64 beans. Still a good price. War in Europe. Um, even Canadian is going to scare you Americans. It's 853 beans and 71 cents Canadian. Now, you wanted to buy it last year, but it was too expensive at 300 bucks. Now, uh, what can I tell you? The market, it is what it is. You know, Canada sells, and I think uh, on the stock market in the States too, uh, pork skin is a commodity. These are becoming commodities, let me tell you. I mean, I'm not saying it's an investment to buy a game, but uh, we'll see. I'll, you'll see. You'll see. I got things happening. Island War, four Pacific battles, 208 bucks. And that's an old SPI game. Here's another old SPI game, Mech War 2. But who wants mechs, right? Rising Star slash White Star? Well, I mean, if who wants mechs? Whoever wants mechs, it's 180 bucks. Okay. Now, I have this game, uh, Red Menace, World War II in 1959. I think, I think this one was sent to me by the designer of the game, if I'm not mistaken. But at that time, you could have gotten it at War Game Vault. And I think it was no more than 50 bucks. You want it now? It'll cost you an extra 100 beans. 150 bucks. What can I tell you? It's what it is. As I said... Um, is it an investment? Well, it depends. Look at uh, Master Herman Lutman. A most fearful sacrifice. It's new and it's mint, probably in shrink, 
and you could get it for $466.31, a most fearful sacrifice, a, um, flying, a, fly, a flying pig games by Herman Lutman designed, um, or you can just go to Flying Pigs, and I think they're they're getting a new shipment of that. But if you want the first edition, it's going to cost you 460 beans. A recent arrival, eh? You bought the board game. The Kickstarter edition. This is a game by Phalanx, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Yarrow uh, sent me this game. And you can get it now for $710. Yes, sir. Ma'am. $710. Canadian. That's probably 20 bucks US, but nevertheless. U boat. $710. Or U boot. Custer's Last Stand. Worthington Publishing. Simple game. Uh, I would say a. Uh, entry-level war game if you want to call it a war game me yeah, i call it a massacre and it's uh, the little bighorn campaign and it's they have two of them one for 172 dollars and one for 179 may yeah, i say go for 179 and let's see what we got here hey what do we got i'll tell you what we got that's what i can't believe when it's time to get the game get the game See what I'm saying? So this right now is 179 bucks. I don't know what the what the, the markup is for um, Noble Knight, but they have to feed the people that work there, and they gotta feed themselves, and they gotta keep going so they can offer us stuff like that. But uh, I think this game was like 35, 40 bucks when it first came out. Now you wanna buy it? It's 180 bucks. Eh, who's freaking out here? Who's freaking out? That's all I'm saying. And I'm not pushing uh, Noble Knight here. I'm just showing you what Noble Knight has. Because I'm pushing it. Now, the campaign for North Africa. This is where I said, wait, wait, the story gets nice. So, Artie just bought this for under a grand. Just bought it. And as he bought it, a new edition came in for 1700 bucks. So Artie could have said, I'm buying it, left it at the uh, Noble Knight for a day. This would come in, and Artie can already resell it at a profit. Is that something? Is that something? So, look, uh, this uh, huge SPI game that Artie says it's unplayable. Uh, uh, I don't know why. Maybe I'm paraphrasing here, but uh, wrongly so, and whatever. Look at that. Uh, Silent Victory. U.S. Submarines in the Pacific. 4145. I have it, but I didn't pay $258 for it. When it came out, I wanted it, and I said, I'm going to get this because they only printed like eight. So get it, and this is what happens if you don't get it. If you want it, that is. If you want something, and it's really not too taxing on your budget, like it's over 25 bucks, just get it. Get it. Life is too short. What the hell? Oh, Hero of Weehawk, uh, Hero of Weehawken, New Jersey. The Aaron Burr Conspiracy, 1805 to 1807. Yeah, you probably could have bought this uh, when Alan Emmerich owned Victory Point Games. Those nice little cute boxes, the pizza boxes. You could have probably bought this for like, oh, I don't know, 15 bucks. Now it's 136. You want it? It's 136 bucks. What do you want me to tell you? Ran, GMT, 200 bucks. Is this a Richard Berg game? <laughs> Richard Berg and Mark Herman. Holy moly, holy moly, 200 bucks. For me, if I'm a fan, I'm a fan of Mark Herman. I don't know much about Richard Berg, but Mark Herman turned me on to Richard Berg in terms of stories. I'd be a fan myself. 200 bucks, if I want that game, I would get it. And it's interesting to me. Yes, it's $200. Put your money aside. Call them, say, hey, man, can you lay away this? I don't know if they're going to say yes or no. And they'll put it away for you if they can. And you just keep paying your little pennies, and one day you're going to get it. Remember Herman Lutman, uh, the, the, the master Herman Lutman? 
at any cost by GMT, but you can get it for 230 bucks now. I think they're gonna reprint the GMT, but if you want it right now, it's 230 bucks. You know what I'm saying? So that's it for my rambling. It was fun. This is pre-show rambling because it's not time for yet for me to do my show. I want to smoke my pipe. You know, I want to get in the mood, this and that, then come down and do a show for you. Well, I started because I was excited. So uh, have a good show. Well, here we go with the crux of the show. What am I doing here? Hold on. Okay. Things are fixed. Uh, it happens. It happens, you know. Mark Felton, the vampire of war games. Mark Felton of Mark Felton Productions has three videos. One is on masks of death in the Third Reich plus President Trump's war hero uncle and the king's World War II secret did George VI abuse his power? <laughs> Hissy Cat, one podcast this week, podcast number 17, and it's War Game Design season number two. That great channel that is Legendary Tactics, four videos, free board game giveaway, plus... Emerge, board game full playthrough, plus history of Avalon Hill 1986 to 1991, the story of Avalon Hill Game Company. Fantastic. Fantastic. I watched it. I think I'm going to watch it again as a rerun. And also Avalon Hill's Outdoor Survival Review. Should you try this game? Of course you should try it. It's Avalon Hill for crying out loud. I got it. Did I try it? Not yet. <coughs> Excuse me. Indian Idol's fantastic channel, World War II, which is coming to an end around August. Uh, three videos, uh, week uh, 291. Chang versus Mountbatten. Also, the Volksturm. A million men to save the Reich. With a question mark. I saw that. Pretty sad. And the final fury of the Allied bombing war against humanity. Unhinged past two videos, Civil War soldiers about Battle of Antietam, plus civilians about life during the U.S. Civil War. The Boss, Clark Commando 1983, four videos, GMT Games, Unconditional Surrender, Learn to Play, After Action Report Part 2, and Axis and Empire Ultimate Edition four-player update, plus Time with Mark, and the GMT Games Unconditional Surrender Learn to Play After Action Report Part Number 3. Combat Board Games. One video looking at Crusaders, the Siege of Acre. Or Acre. 1291 from the art 
of war games. For our Polish viewers, Wojnek TV, Michel's channel, three videos, votes for women, a Hollandspiel game, also unboxing Mex Stulicia, I hope I said that right, and the March Against the Tyrant on Wojnek TV. My favorite Frenchie, Freddy, Fred Serval of Homo Ludens, has two videos. Bessimi Uyanik. I hope I said that right. Empowering history through gaming, Ion Games, and the story dot dot dot. An Aircon 24 Intro to Wargaming event debrief. Look at those people. Gimpy of the Gimpy Gamer 2 video, Skies of Victory review. And trick shot gameplay part number one. Hardy of Art Wolf Slayer, two videos on live, but he's got other videos. What am I saying? Anyways, two videos counter clipping episode 166, the best of strategy and tactics, the SPI years 69 to 82, and the chit so, the chit so, the chit show. With Dan and Artie, I'm Dan. The passing of a legend. Uh, Dean Essig. 1961 to 2024. God. He's like uh, three years older than me. Kilroy of Kilroy was here. Has eight videos. Uh, Monty, Monty's Gamble Market Garden MMP Unboxing. Also, Kawaguchi's Gamble, an MMP game, an unboxing. Plus, Here to Slay by Unstable Games, an unboxing. Saturday, uh, Sanctuary Sunday, Rallyman GT, Holy Grail, he says. Angola, MMP, an unboxing. Cold War Battles 2 by Strategy and Tactics, number 263, an, an unbagging and page turn. And the Mog, I hate the Mog, Mogadishu, the Mog. The Mog by White Dog Games, Unboxing Plus. Kilroy goes down to the movies, Black Hawk Down. And Kilroy and Son, Universe Beyond Fallout, uh, Fallout Mutant Menace by MTG. Magic the Gathering, I should say, not by MTG, it's Magic the Gathering. He told me it was really heavily into Magic the Gathering. Because the son enjoys playing it, so... I mean, I would do the same, you know? Well, well, what do you want to play, son? Okay, let's play it. That's the way it'd be. The name of the game. One video. How to play Star Wars. Um, Star Wars. How to play Starfleet Battles. Cadet Training Manual Lesson Number 4. The Dakota Incident. The Gentleman of the Player's Aid. Four videos. They review Downfall and also unbox Axes and Empires Ultimate Edition by Decision Games. And then they solo play through Endurance, a game by Hollenspiele. And they unbox Halls of Hegra by Tompet Games. Not Trumpet Games, Tompet. Uh, get it right. Charles Latora, eight videos. He checks out game number three of Storm of Steel. And... Storm of Steel second mission truck smashed, replaced by D10. And mail call, oh, orc troops in 15 millimeter irregular miniatures from their UK. Plus hunting vamps, ain't easy. Holy water to the left, stakes to the right, silver bayonets to the front, I guess. More shelves, 23A, 23B, 24, a little bit of everything. And backyard flowers and bees. Spring is here, yes it is. Breakfast and miniatures and French had enough, have had enough, retreating quickly. <clears throat> Gaming through history, Joshua, Hebrews versus Pagans, this week. On Gamer Hudson, one video, World War II in numbers, Twilight of the Axis, 1943, and onward. All this in 4K on Gamer Hudson. Simple History has one video, and it is U.S. Most Daring Mission in Panama, Operation Acid Gambit in 1989. 
Hmm, I might know someone who knows something about that. But anyways. Smart War Games, four movies. Uh, four movies, four videos. Three of them are on Spearhead 1944, Arma 3, World War II Cobra expansion. Plus Wartop on Steam. I think this is a temporary video on Smart War Games. Once Upon a Game, Kevin Kitchen's channel. Save South Vietnam, an unboxing. This is an older game, I think. I don't know. Check out Once Upon a Game. On my own worst enemy, we have three videos, and it's the CSA American Civil War turn number one, plus Rebel Fury, an unboxing, and another unboxing with burning banners. History Hustle, one video, Paraguay during World War II. Huh? Paraguay. Where were they? Watch History Hustle. We're going to tell you. And look at these guys. Let's play Vijayana Gara on Tony. Tony's Board Life with ID Jester and a handsome musician, a rough swordsman. Ruffy. Centurion's Review Dave comes back with a video in its monstrous manner. Game book, an adventure game book by Martin Cruz. The Chief in Bonding with Board Games and RPGs has two videos. He reviews the Plum Island Horror, a game by the master Herman Lottman, plus three guys and a zombie play The Walking Dead. AMC number six, Chubbs, Free League. Prasutagus, the Orwell Wargamer, one video, Turkish Army, GNW 1700-1721, 6mm showcase. My God, that's tiny. What can I say? Ben Harsh of Harsh Rules has one video and it's part 19. Rules breakdown of Advanced Squad Leader Starter Kit Series revised. And he talks about vehicle combat. Okay, this this is the, 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 the module where they introduce uh, tanks. And the BGG Top 25 Visualized 2001 to 2024 on three minute, is it three minute war games? My God, I forget. See, I, I, I didn't put it on. Three minute videos. You know what I'm saying. That's why you come here to get the factual news. Hey, alter two videos or more than that. Horror short films. These are all short, short horror films. Pruning is starting Madeline Brewer. Plus, the short film Salvatore. Throwback Thursdays on Alter. Fun stuff. You know what I'm saying? Storm of Steel Wargaming. Two videos. A hobby update. Plus, Grab the Graben on Sh Storm of Steel Wargaming. Respect. Jim Ozarkski, three videos. The Battle of Catarabra for General Darmé too, And the action of Galamanche for I Ain't Been Shot, Mum. And Firebase, too, for Charlie Don't Surf. The cop that is Wayne Hansen has three videos. All of these videos on Storm Over Jerusalem. An unboxing, turn one tutorial, an overview and review on the cop. That is Wayne Hansen. For the final Wednesday of March 2024, I will talk about how to find the perfect game reviewer, what is happening in Warfighter Corner, what is in the works on the Seek Out and Play YouTube channel, and what videos are coming up in April all on Speak Out and Play. Speak Out and Play is a monthly podcast that comes out on the Monday before the final Wednesday of each month in audio form. The video comes out on the final Wednesday of each month on the Seek Out and Play YouTube channel. The podcast covers my opinions along with news and upcoming videos about the channel. Check out previous podcasts on Buzzsprout, Spotify, and on the Seek Out and Play YouTube channel. 
I also post new videos and announcements on my Facebook and X pages. Plus, if you want to support my efforts to improve the channel, you can visit my Patreon page as well. Seek Out and Play releases a new video each week, so I will see you next Wednesday. Hey, how you doing? All right. I started playing games again. Yep. So I'm going to know of what I speak of, or I'm going to know of what you speak of and not be so much of a cheerleader than now being an, in, uh, an ignorant bastard. I'd rather be an ignorant bastard sometimes in war games because cheerleaders, well, some people just don't go for me. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, I got this game, Pocket Landship. All right. This was by Scott Allen Cezy or Chezzy. I'm sorry if I destroyed your name. This here won the Golden Geek Award in 2017, a nominee. So, you know, I figured, what the hey? And this is from Word Forge Force Games. It's made in England. So it says here in the back, and I'm gonna put this uh, uh, I'm put this in the front like that. Hold on a second. Let me let me make it nice, nice, you know. So I, as I'm reading the back, you can see this. So it says, Commander, welcome to the world of pocket landship uh, landship. With your skill, our new diesel-powered landship, and a little luck, we hope to rid the land of those evil intruding mechs. And end the Steam Age forever. Go be victorious. Blah, blah, blah. So, World War I. Um, steampunk. The setting's fun, you know? Setting's fun. It comes with a little rule book. I say of about, I don't know, 10, 10, 12 pages. It's tiny, tiny. You know what I'm saying? Are the rules written well? Yeah, they're written well. Uh, you see, I, I, I played this game a couple of times, so I know what I'm talking about. And um, they're set up for solo play, and you could play up to how many players here? Eh, you, can, you can adjust the difficulty. You have different scenarios. You can do a campaign mode, a player co-op mode. So basically... This is the package here. Hold on, hold on. You get it. You get what? Two decks of cards. All these dice. Some of those dice you put in as indications of uh, how strong the strength of the, of, of the of your forces against their forces. And cards come like that. So you would put a three. Uh, three pip dice on that as it says and when you roll the dice you choose one of these uh choices here and it tells you what to do right so you want to do it you do it you don't want to do it you don't do it and so you'd have your mechs or your troops in front they have nine troops coming at you right so you got your hull you got your cannon and what they call sponsons, right? And uh, you roll the dice, man, and you place the dice as is. Now I'm wondering if... What's that guy's name? He's doing a tactical firefight with dice. Sam London. Now I'm wondering, Sam London's game is going to be a bit like this, but with more in-depth choices. Like, this is a pocket game. It's a lot of fun. It takes up space like... Uh, well, it'll take up your whole train on a train. On a plane, you can probably get away with it. But I remember Herman, Herman Lutman, being interested in this. And, you know, he had he said he had fun, if I'm not mistaken. It's a two player game, 15 to 30 minutes. And, uh, yeah. So you get 12 landship cards, 6 commander cards, 4 driver cards. The commander and the driver cards gives you extra options, like an extra DRM or something. And you get six advantage cards every time you kill. Every time you kill two mechs, you get an advantage card, and it gives you an advantage. 
12 tracking dice, and a rule booklet. Look, I'm telling you, when you're bored at work, because right now I'm, I've got, I, I work at a truck stop, so sometimes it's really easy going, sometimes it's crazy, right? I'm expecting crazy this weekend, so there's probably going to be more truck stop stories, or truck stop tales, as I say, because uh, it, it's, it's my life. So Pocket Landship by Word Forge Games, I like it. Hi folks, it's me entering Mike in the Man Cave of Madness. This is my weekly channel update. As you can see up here, we have a water buffalo horn. Oh no, I mean over there. We have four videos. We have last week's uh, channel update. We got three other videos. We did our game giveaway for March. Two winners. There was uh, Demi1970, the one in the war game category, and chose the Luzon campaign. Uh, 1945 in uh, World at War magazine from Decision Games, and Bill Thornton chose in the board game category Urban Sprawl from GMT. Uh, last week we'd done our first part of our how to play and our playthrough of the Battle for St. Louis from the Historical Game Company. Here we finish up our playthrough. We do a after action review. Now this was quite a challenging <laughs> game for the the British side and their Native American allies. I would say almost impossible to win unless you're like really, really lucky. So in my after action review, I spent a lot of time talking about different options, house rules, on how you can try to improve that play balance. So if you're interested in that, uh, take a look. And the last thing we did is an unboxing. This is uh, Veliki Aluki, Stalingrad of the North. This is a small footprint game from Legion War Games, designer Michael Taylor. It's uh, 1942, 1943... Germans versus the, the, the Soviets. Uh, I got this on sale. I don't think it's still on sale, but it's a small footprint game with only, you know, an 11 by 17 map and 64 counters. I think it's pretty cheap, so maybe only like 20 bucks, and I got it on sale for 16 or whatever, so uh, check that out if you like nice small footprint games, something that can play relatively quickly. Now, so uh, next week, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I've finished three of my uh, five games in my campaign for the American Revolutionary War in the western frontier uh and i'm definitely gonna try to get the next two and finish that up in april but maybe not next week so not sure what to do so so make sure you stay tuned and uh maybe be surprised next week so that's it i'm gonna send it back to all you folks watching uh, dan pincali's no enemies here take care and ciao kings and generals three videos how Constantinople survived an Ottoman siege. Plus, what was the structure of medieval Japan? A guide to the Shogun TV show. Plus, how the Khazars and the Arabs became enemies. I hope I said that well. On Kings and Generals. Pushing Cardboard, one video and it's Jacobite Rising. An unboxing this week on Pushing Cardboard. For our Italian listeners, Mauro Faina! Four videos, three of them are on Il Gianizero Nero, and he talks about France 48 GMT game, plus uh, something else on I, 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 Causa's Belly. I don't know what's going on here, but Mauro knows. Watch it for our Italian viewers. ID Jester, four videos this week. What are you slacking off? Last Epoch! Level 67, Sorcerer, then level 69, and level 72, and starting level 1, Rogue Bowmaster. All this on ID Jester. Ticanis George, the Leonidas of ASL. George Yotis, three videos. So I would say S23, Monty's Gamble, Tips and Tactics, part number one, plus... Oki Way Breakfast Sandwich, as we say in Italian. But George is Greek. Ah, eh, George. Faristo, George. Faristo for making this. Faristo for everything. You know what I'm saying? So, SK23 Money's Gamble Part 2. The Consequences on George Heotis's channel. Hexton Counters 3 videos. The Hunters Career Playthrough Part 4. 
Plus Headquarters World War II British Gameplay Examples. This is on Headquarters World War II game. That's what it's called. And look ahead at April. The contents of looking ahead at April on Hexed Encounters. For God's sakes, man. I gotta learn how to speak. Agility Snips Gaming Table. Three videos, Silent War slash IGN 2nd Edition Playthrough Part 8. This is a Compass Games game plus Irish Freedom War of Independence by White Dog Games Part 1 and Skies Above Britain, Jeremy White, Chapter 1, Part 5, and I think Gina Willis on this one. I don't know. I could be mistaken. It's with two players. Stephen Dolge's three videos, and three videos are all on the Ultimate Edition of Axis and Empire Training Scenario Barbarossa Part 2B, and Part 3, and Part 4 Training Scenario. Ah, you gotta be into war games, let me tell ya. Cutesy Pootsy Zella Blitz, two videos, France 40, Second Edition First Look. And a most fearful sacrifice, solo gameplay, U.S. Civil War, Gettysburg War game by Flying Pig Games, and designed by no other than the Master Herman Lotman. Phoenix Knight, four videos, 600th video, Mystical Munchies, uh, Chocolate Cream Pie. I gotta look at this guy's videos more often for some, uh, for some cooking stuff, but... Yeah, I'm sorry. Season tickets, baseball, plus the Plum Island Horror, and unboxing uh, Eon's End, War Eternal, and the New Age, or Eon's End, or Eon's End. And, uh, the way you want to spell it, the A could be silent, could be, pron uh, could be pronounced. Uh, Katsunasachi, a lot of skata happening here, but anyways. Timothy Phelps, three videos, one subject, Gloomhaven. Button and Bugs, Scenario 1, 2, and 2, a retry. He retried it. That means he didn't do well, or he did well, and he wants to do better. Or worse. War Stories, four videos, how the USSR shocked the world with the T-34 tanks. He shocked the world. He shocked, uh, he shocked the Germans. Plus the complete story of Britain's misjudged war against the Zulu Kingdom. And a look inside the most powerful artillery of all time. I guess it's the 155. Whatever. And how did World War II's fascist dictators rise to power? You got Franco, you got the monkey Mussolini, and you got the idiot Hitler. On War Stories this week. That's my opinion of these guys. No, War Stories. Mussolini, Hitler, and uh, Franco. Cody of the Discriminating Gamer, three videos, uh, Right Force, he takes a look at, I never heard of that, looks fun, plus Cody's top 10 expansions of 2023, holy moly, this guy, he's going plus Firefly, the game, the 10th anniversary collector edition, I enjoyed that show, really, I did, it was fun. The Colonel, the Canadian Colonel, CC, Sean Lambert. Two videos, he looks at Bitter Woods, the Heller, Randy Heller, that's it. Full gameplay, exp episode number five. Plus, in, he has a video of In Memory of Dean Essig. On Sean, CC, Canadian Colonel, Sean Lambert. Castle Archon, two videos. The Legend of Robin Hood. I have that game. Plus, The Legend of Robin Hood. Scenario report, sorry. So he goes through a scenario of The Legend of Robin Hood. An old Avalon Hill game that came in a little box and or Ziploc. I got the little box. I, I like boxes. Gamer Hudson, one video and it's World War II in numbers. Twilight of the Axis, 1943, and onward. Timmy of Hairbrain Games, The Long Winter, he explains why he hasn't been putting up videos as often as he usually does. Timmy, be well. Trista Bills. 
the tricks are failed. Hi. I'm at work right now. This is what my my life is gonna look like till retirement. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Someone save me for God's sakes, man. Anyways, it's fine, it's fine. So I'm at the truck stop and I'm replacing toilet paper, right? The big rolls. And um this is what is what's written on the box up here somewhere. Um, mini jumbo. I mean, you want to mess me up? Say that. Give me a mini jumbo thing. What do you want? The mini one or the jumbo one? The mini jumbo. It, uh, it, it blows my mind. Stuff like that. It doesn't make sense to me. You understand? Huh? For God's sake, man. God, now I gotta go home with this in my head. Dressed up bills, the tricks are bills. Another week, another show. This week has been a little bit sad because of Dean Essex passing and my condolences to the family and friends alike. Um, well, I mean, after something like that, what do you say? You know what I mean? Um, I was at WBC when Richard Byrd died, and I was something. Um, I remember Mark walking out of the room like a, a little agitated, but I mean, it just looked like he was walking fast, and then we heard the news after. And Dinesig, well, uh, it actually was on Facebook for me. That's the way I saw it. Anyways, have a good weekend and um, be nice because be nice. Uh, yeah, you, you never know. Just be nice. <laughs>